So you just got a drone and you're wondering how the heck to actually get started in flying this thing and get those great shots. That's awesome because today we're sharing the basics in getting started in flying drones, the safety measures that you should take, and how to get those creative shots. Let's get started. Today I'll be shooting primarily with the DJI Mavic 3 for its incredible image quality, but keep in mind that many of the tips can apply to a multitude of drones. When it comes to safety protocols, it's important to do your due diligence and follow all local flight restrictions and local regulations and make sure that your flight is both safe and legal. Also keep in mind that rules and regulations are constantly changing, so you'll have to stay on top of that as a drone operator. The FAA requires all operators who are flying their drones commercially, that is if you're making money while flying drones, to get the proper licensing to do so. Also, recently the FAA implemented recreational flying tests that you must pass in order to fly drones as well. You can find all this information on the FAA website. When training for all of these tests, you'll get all the knowledge necessary in understanding the airspace around you and all the regulations. And if you're preparing for a flight ahead of time and you want to check out if you could fly in that airspace, you can always use DJI's app to make sure that you're able to do so. There's also apps like AirMap and Aloft that allow you to do the same thing. Moving on to drone basics when it comes to photo and video. For photo, you want to make sure that you're shooting in RAW. This is because DJI's RAW DNGs gives you the most versatility in post-production. Next, you want to shoot with panorama functions. DJI's panorama allows you to shoot 180, 360, and other panoramas that you can take advantage of. The benefit of shooting panoramas is you get the highest quality out of your frame, you get a wider field of view of your scene, and you could always reframe in post. Also, be sure to take advantage of DJI's HDR function, which is for high dynamic range scenes. This is called Smart Photo and it allows you to take three images or five images at different exposure bracketing. This is perfect for high dynamic scenes like sunsets or sunrises. Keep in mind that you'll have to merge these exposures in post-production. DJI's app will stitch together your panoramas, but you should also take advantage of stitching the RAWs in post-production as well. Now moving on to drone basics when it comes to video. If you're just getting started in drone flying and exposure in general, perhaps you want to take advantage of DJI's auto functions. This will set all of the parameters, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO automatically so that you can keep the focus on flying. Then once you're ready for manual exposure, you'll be able to set all of your parameters yourself. The benefit of this is when you're filming a drone clip, it won't shift the exposure throughout the clip. One of the greatest benefits of shooting with DJI drones is the in-flight hyperlapse feature, making hyperlapses really simple to actually create. Hyperlapses are essentially time lapses in motion. The best part about shooting hyperlapses is that you can capture really dynamic videos of clouds moving across the sky or cars moving across the road. DJI Mavic 3 is one of the better drones for shooting hyperlapses because of its stability, performance in low light, and overall image quality. And one of the greatest benefits for shooting hyperlapses is that you can always pull a still from that hyperlapse to use as an individual photo. Next, you want to consider your speed versus your altitude. And by this, I mean you want to make sure that you know what you're looking for in your video clip. If you're looking for a very dynamic shot that looks quickly moving, then perhaps you want to fly lower so that when you're moving across the ground, it'll look like you're moving faster. The higher you're flying, the slower it'll look like you're moving across the sky. If you're just starting out, perhaps you want to consider filming at 60 FPS or 120 FPS so that you can smooth out some of those jerky movements. Now moving on to the creative and fun part. First we're going to talk about lighting. Lighting is just as important in the sky as it is on the ground. So to plan out lighting, you can use apps like Photopills to understand where the sun is going to be before you actually arrive on a location. You'll find that the best and most dramatic lighting conditions are during sunset and sunrise when the sun is lower in the sky. Now that we've talked about lighting and your flight plan, let's talk about compositional techniques. To really make your photos and videos pop, incorporate framing and camera movements like leading lines, orbiting shots, reveal shots, parallaxing shots, and bird's eye view shots. Now let's talk about filters. Filters are beneficial for drone flying in both photo and video settings. With ND filters and video, you can abide by the 180 degree shutter rule. The 180 degree shutter rule suggests that your shutter speed should always be double your frame rate. And then on the photo side, you'll be able to experiment with long exposures in the sky. 
Another filter to experiment with, and one of my personal favorites, a ProMist filter. The benefits of using a ProMist filter is it'll soften the image and your highlights for an overall cinematic result. I hope this helps you to get going in aerial photo and video. Although we've only scratched the surface, you'll see the most benefit from actually getting out there and start flying. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions, tag us in any photos and videos that you get with your drone. We would love to see it. My name is Matt, and thanks for watching.